Um, I, I probably started thinking this way when I was, you know, maybe 15, 16 years old. Um, and uh, they they say you don't really wake up from uh, dreams, you wake up from nightmares. Uh, and not to say my childhood was a nightmare at all, by any means. But, but I certainly started to see a pattern, uh, you know, where whatever my struggles or challenges were at that age, um, if, if they were ever kind of met or satisfied, I started to see how the next day my brain found new struggles and challenges uh, to, to, to be at odds with. And you start to realize how amazingly resilient that part of your brain is um, that, that can just create conflict and truly be at odds with what is. Um, and and I, I started to worry that no matter what happened or where I uh, went in my life, will that always be that way? What's preventing me from being truly happy or truly peaceful or present? Um, what is the thing that's creating this conflict? And you start to realize a lot of it, you know, when you take, it's, it's not those individual things, well, that girl didn't like me, or well, that guy's smarter than me. That's, that's not it. It's the part of your brain that is driving this machine, the I, that ego, um, it's, it's a very self-serving animal. Um, and and it, it lives in a world of comparison. Um, and, and a lot of Eastern, Philosophies, whether it's Buddhism or Taoism, Hinduism, they all kind of share a similar awareness of that brain noise and uh, its, you know, potential pitfalls. And and at that age, I just kind of that that's the one thing that just made the most sense to me. That's the one thing that I saw um, as it just made sense to the treadmill that I saw myself running on. That was the one thing that I said, yeah, that's exactly the, that's what's going on here. This this is just this brain that just. Uh, it's no matter what I do, it's going to find new things. Um, scared me and that worried me and uh, that that's what kind of made me want to pursue a little bit more exploration into that way. It's a good question. I think the, the key word there is practice. I try to look at it as practice. You know, I my, my biggest struggle um, in my early 20s was believing I understood a concept or a certain philosophy that I subscribed to, but then consistently not living that way and not executing those those beliefs and struggling and being depressed or, or um, you know, disappointed in life. And that's, that's I, I knew better, but I wasn't living that way. And that's really frustrating. And, and the problem is that's all just ego. That's ego sneaking in the back door. That That's, that's, that's you kind of the part of your brain that thinks about the story of Chris wants to see that story in a certain light, but that's just ego. That's that's you know that's not real either. Um, so for me, it's a matter of being perfectly okay, exactly where I am, and practicing. It's like uh, if if I was going to try and pick up a sport, you know, I'm not going to be amazing tomorrow. Today, I just have to dribble. Just got to dribble the ball. Um, and if the ball gets away from me today, it's okay get it back and just dribble again. Even if it takes all of my focus and energy just to dribble this ball, maybe tomorrow it won't. And it won't be as you know, consuming. Um, but but it's okay to be where I am. I don't have to wake up tomorrow and be a pro. Um, and I think that, um, that mentality has, has gone a long way for me in terms of just surrendering um, to the moment, surrendering to where I am, and surrendering even to my failures. Your, your failures are okay too. I used to really be very hard, hard on myself um, if I thought I wasn't accomplishing something or, or reaching a certain level. But you know, be with your failures. They're 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 just as educational and just as uh, opening to the process as the successes. And eventually, if you're, I would hope, um, you know, the notion of success and failure will begin to dilute as well. Um, so yeah, just 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 practice life that you can share sure Shh. it's my favorite it's my favorite uh, I did a little uh, with Lindsay actually I went to uh, India we did this uh, retreat a few years back and uh, one of the guys our, our, our guru on the trip uh, is a man a man named uh, Nan brilliant 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 man um, and he, he would you know, lecture every day and there were just so many times where I had questions and I would just raise my hand and I he kind of just kept telling me to shh, and it was so frustrating because I just, I just had, a, I felt I had good questions, and I just, if you just give me an answer, I'll be quiet. Um, and he kept telling me to be quiet, 
um, and it really bothered me, and it made me doubt. Um, but what he was, it was a very effective tool because the truth is, the part of my brain that needed that answer, that wanted that answer, is the part of the brain that I don't need. Um, that's it's, it's kind of this. I needed it to get me to India. There's a great quote I read, uh, you know, you need the boat to cross the river. But once you cross the river, you don't need the boat. So I needed my, you know, confusion and my ego and my struggle to wake me up to the fact that I don't need it. Um, and I think the part of my brain that wanted all those answers in India uh, was the part of my brain that he was telling me just to be quiet with. Just be quiet. Shh. Just be present. And if you really, shh, really be quiet, like I said, it's not like the part of your brain that wants the questions gets an answer. It's that the part of your brain that wants the question just kind of dissipates. There's no more need for an answer because there was really no need for a question. Um, so, so for me, it's just you know, very noisy brain. That's not quitting. That's not giving up. That's not forfeiting. It's uh, it's surrendering which I like to, it's, you know, when you use the word surrender, you remember that there was a fight going on. There was a fight in my brain, an unnecessary battle that I'm fighting with myself. Uh, so, so just kind of, shh, just kind of surrender a little bit and, and you, you, you'll have a flash of something real nice. And then your brain will quickly try and understand it and it'll never be able to, <laughs> and it'll be this horrible cycle, but you'll, you'll feel it and you'll want it again. Thought process gets you through the ups and downs associated with that thought process. Uh, for me, it's trying to stay present. Um, you know, I think Lindsay, as you know, uh, Lindsay and I met when I was 17, and, and we, we both had a very similar uh, spiritual uh, belief system. Um, and and my, my, mine was a little more rooted in a little bit more of a noisy brain. You know, I, I, I had certain beliefs. And, uh, desires and I wanted to be a certain type of person but but a lot of my thoughts were kind of um, I guess rooted in the ego you know and when I say the ego I don't necessarily mean arrogance I just mean the part of your brain that is the that says I it's the thinker um, and, and that part of your brain is very uh, self-serving and it's very uh, it lives in a world of comparisons and uh, time and none of these things are helpful um, and, and it, it just kind of would consistently take me out of a positive place, you know, the, the man I wanted to be, or the man I thought I should be, or, um, you know, thinking you know how you should be doing things, or what you should be doing, but then not executing those things leaves you in this kind of spiral of disappointment. But again, all that thinking is based on time. You're, you're, you're basing who you are and what you think you should be on who you'll be tomorrow and who you were yesterday. And uh, so, so for me, the, the most effective tool I've adopted is just trying to stay present. When, when you're in the moment, um, it's not like you've uh, satisfied the part of your brain that, that thinks in terms of time. It's that the part of your brain that thinks in terms of time just gets quiet, kind of doesn't exist anymore. Um, so a lot of my old hurdles have kind of become far more manageable by just, just staying present. All you really have in life, I think, is just now, a series of nows. Um, and I think when you can kind of surrender to that, um, you can't lose. So, so for me, uh, getting through the struggles that are associated with day-to-day -day life is just be present. Don't, don't think about tomorrow. Don't think about the next minute. Just where are you right now? Don't miss right now. Be here now. Um, and, and a nice sense of calm just kind of washes over.